discussed about reflection through a plane surface and reflection through spherical surface, isn't it? And using laws of reflection, you can also take care of reflection through any other kind of surface. Yes or no? Right? So we have discussed how light get deviated because of reflection. And because lights get deviated, the image may not coincide with the object. Ready? You may get a feel that light is coming from somewhere else, not from the object, because light is deviated now. So that is why we talk about formation of image. Because ultimately what your eyes observe is the image. Where your eye feel that light is coming from. Okay? So we have done entire reflection, then after that we started refraction. Fine. Refraction is slightly bigger topic than reflection. Okay? Because we are not only dealing with lenses but interface between the two mediums. Okay? In refraction, you have light that changes the medium. It goes from one medium to other medium. Right? And how you define the medium? With what factor? Refractive index. Refractive index defines a medium. That is its optical property. Fine. Now, how much light bends not only depends on the refractive index, but also depends on how the geometry is of the interface between the two media. Okay? So we have already discussed about the horizontal surface, as in when the interface is horizontal or straight or planar. Right? So we have discussed that and we have learned about, uh, you know, using Snell's law, we have found out where the image will be, how much shift in the object will be, apparent shift, right? So we have done all that and then uh, we have also discussed a very peculiar phenomenon refraction which is total internal reflection. What was that? When light travels from denser to rarer medium at an angle of incidence which is more than the critical angle, the light will not refract, it will reflect and the angle of incidence becomes equal to angle of reflection. Fine? So there can be a lot of very nice question on reflection only this much of, you know. So uh, this is one and then after that we discussed refraction through spherical surface and how spherical surface creates an image. Right? So we also derived a formula. What is that formula? N2 by V minus N1 by U is equal to N2 minus N1 by R. We derived this or not? Right? So we discussed this formula and we also, uh, you know, taken few numericals that take care of this scenario and then have we done numericals on this last class? Right? So we now very well know how to apply this formula. Isn't it? So this formula is basically mother of all formulas in refraction. Because even for the planar surface, you can use this. You can put R equal to infinity, you will get a formula for planar surface also. Right? And in fact, the topic which we are going to study right now, which is lens. Even for lenses also, we, whatever formula you will derive will be from this particular equation. Okay? Because lens has two interfaces. Right? One interface is this side, other interface that side. Right? So you will use interface formula only. One interface and other interface. Okay? And why we are finding out lens formula? If we already have an interface formula, why we need a lens formula? Have you guys know this? Because lens formula will directly give you the image location. You don't need to use interface formula two times because there are two interfaces. First this interface forms image, then that interface forms image. Okay? So either you use interface formula and use two-step approach to find the image or you use lens formula to directly get the location of image. Okay? So that is why we have lens formula. Okay? And when we say lens formula and whatever we are doing with respect to lens, the assumption is this, that if there is a lens, refractive index this side and that side, both are same. That is the assumption. Okay? And refractive index of the glass could be anything, glass or whatever substance it is made up of. 
but both sides should have same refractive index. Then only your lens formula which we are going to derive will be valid. Okay? Suppose this is N3, then you can't use lens formula. Then what do you have to do? Use interface formula. First between these two interfaces, then between those two interfaces. Okay? Is that clear? So these are the few things. And another assumption when we are studying lens is that these lenses are thin. Okay? So write down a few assumptions for lens. The assumptions are in, in our syllabus, okay, whenever we talk about lens, the thickness of the lens is negligible. So we call them thin lenses. Okay? They are thin and also their aperture is less. Say the aperture assumption is same as that we had in, in case of spherical mirror. Okay? So our the aperture related assumption remains same here also. Okay? So before we even proceed talking about lenses, we should we should first try to find out a few terminologies which we'll be using to explain about lens. Okay? We'll be like for example in case of mirror, what are the things we have used to explain what is happening with mirror? Radius of curvature, center of curvature, and then focal length, aperture, and all that, right? So similarly, let's see what are the terminologies for lens, okay? Now before we even do that, do you know how many types of lenses are there? Do you have this lens? What is this? This is convex lens or it also called as double convex lens, okay? What is this? This is concave lens. Okay, this is also called converging lens. This converging or convex. This is also called diverging or concave lens. Why it is called diverging and this is converging? Because this diverges the parallel rays and this converges the parallel rays. Okay, what about this? This is plano convex. Okay, this one, plano concave. Okay, that one, concave or convex. Okay, and the assumption is all of their thicknesses are small. Alright, now what we do going forward is that we are not going to study all of them one by one. We will be only talking about this lens, okay? And then we will be using sign convention. Because of that sign convention, whatever formula you derive will be true for all cases. You getting it? 